Hey friends, thank you for joining us today. This is your friend from Motivation Mastery Mind. As always, we're here to share with you the positive, constructive, optimistic, and kind. We've got a great message for you today. How often have you wanted to do more, to be more, and to accomplish more? But, for some reason, some way, the experts or your family say you can't do it, you don't have the resources, you're not prepared, and a hundred other excuses, or the experts that will tell you that it's impossible to do it. Well, what about your own self-talk as well? How many times in your own internal dialogue, when you want to do more, be more, and accomplish more, that you say to yourself, I don't know, maybe I'm going to wait till next year when everything slows down, and the football club you know, just excuses, or the internal dialogue makes you feel like you don't have the ability to do this, that you just think you're not prepared enough to do it. We're going to talk a little bit about a famous athlete, his name was Roger Bannister, who was the first person in recorded history that we know of to break the four minute mile and use him as an example and as a model for you and I that we can use to be more successful by crushing the assumptions and by changing our own internal dialogue. Stick with us, we've got some great content to share with you. So Roger grew up in early 1900s in England. And around 1940 or so, he was uh, given a scholarship at 17 years old to study medicine at Oxford University. Now when he was at Oxford, he also decided to start uh, studying medicine and become a runner. And what's interesting is he said that he didn't have a whole lot of time, so during the day he would spend three pence, I don't know what that is, but it doesn't sound like it's a whole lot, to go down to the local park and run. He tried to be very efficient in a certain amount of time, and then he would come back and study. He was brought on as a third string track runner. He wasn't doing very well. People said that he didn't have a very efficient run, that he walked kind of funny, but yet he persisted. So. As he became a runner and he was on the third string, he was often what they called a pacer. He would run a very short distance of the distance of the race to keep the best players running at their best the entire race. But he entered into one race, it was a one mile race, and he had his part to do, but he decided to keep running. And he did, not only did he do well, but he won. And that changed his mindset. And at that point he said that he began to think, if he could do that, he could be better. Now the British Empire at that time, the, uh, the United Kingdom, had their eyes set on having the first runner ever to break the four minute mile. No one had ever done it at that point in recorded history. So Roger progressively got better and better and better. But the experts still said that the four minute mile was impossible. There had been many runners that had got close four minutes 30 seconds, four minutes 15 seconds, four minutes 10 seconds, but they said it was absolutely impossible. In fact, they said that if a runner were to surpass the four minutes or do a sub four minute run, that they would literally fall dead. Roger didn't believe that because he as he'd gotten closer, he'd won a lot of races, he'd also had a lot of failures. He was getting closer and closer and his peers were getting closer and closer as he got closer. He said he knew when he got to about four minutes in two seconds that the barrier was no longer physical it was psychological and he knew that he could do it so the big turning point for Roger was when he went to the Helsinki Olympics and I think he got fourth place or maybe eighth place I don't remember but he set a British record and it was at that point he was absolutely sure that he would win in 1952 he started training harder and harder and harder and became more focused. He knew at that point the barrier was not physical, it was mental. Here comes 1954, one of the biggest races ever in European history, some of the greatest runners. And Roger crushed the record. He did a sub four minute record, first time in history. Now what's interesting is that was a celebrated event. People recognized that he was the first person. People were proud. Headlines everywhere. He was in all the magazines. He was all over the news. But what's interesting 
is that 45 days later, his greatest competitor, his greatest rival, broke the same record and did a sub four minute mile. The following years, scores of runners did the same thing. And as of today, in 2020, two years after Roger Bannister's death, it's known that 4,500 plus mid distance runners have broken that record and do a sub four minute mile. It's actually the gold standard. 50, 60 years ago, it was impossible. Roger Bannister was a pace setter. And how did he do it? He challenged the assumptions that people had about him. He didn't believe the labels that were put on him, that he had an unseemly gait, that he just wasn't a good walker, that he wasn't a good runner, that he didn't have the physical stamina. He didn't believe the experts. He challenged the assumptions, and then he broke it. So the important lesson here is that there are thousands of athletes, thousands of innovators, thousands of people who have crushed records, who have went on to do miraculous things, that have created miraculous inventions that have changed our lives, who started out hearing that they weren't good enough or that it was impossible. So I want you to think about that. When you want to do more, be more, and accomplish more, what are the things that you want to accomplish? It may not just be that you want to get a college degree, but what about five steps ahead? Change the way you set and your mindset, and maybe not only get that college degree, but change the world. Could you create an alternate, an alternate energy source? Could you create a new way of changing heart surgery? Could you create a new belief system that allows people to be better and do better and accomplish more? Can you be a better educator to help people that want to learn in a new setting rather than the traditional settings that we have now? Because that's what we're told. That's the way to learn. Challenge it. Find a way. Do not believe what people say about you. If you know you have a gift inside, believe what God tells you about yourself don't believe, don't believe the people that tell you you can't do it. One of the things we hear, for example, in the Christian scriptures, one of the first doubts that was placed in the minds of man, who told you that you were naked? Who placed that shame on them? Shame, doubt, disorientation, all of these things distract us from our true purpose. And we really control that. We're the ones that have the ability to allow that to go in. We're the ones that put the filter and the lens on our eyes, the filter on our ears, and we're the one that controls the internal dialogue. My message to you today is take Roger Bannister and anyone else around you that you can see who has been successful. Study them and you will find that they have a challenged, they have challenged, they have decimated often the assumptions, they have challenged and they have decimated what the experts said. And they often didn't believe what their family said about them when their families were naysayers, even their best friends. And perhaps even at some times they had doubts about themselves as they had tremendous failure before they had tremendous success. These successful people have been people who have learned from their failures, that have ignored all of the other things and have been successful. So to wrap up, I've, I've actually came here with a family member because it's a quiet place to record and to do these things today. But I'm in a cemetery. And if you were to look around, my family member and I, we actually walked around this area and we asked ourselves in the spirit of motivation and the spirit of accomplishment and the spirit of fulfillment, what would these people that have already passed away who have lived short or long lives, who have lived through all the circumstances, what would they tell us? they would tell us to live. And they would tell us to learn to live abundantly and to live in the most fulfilled way possible. I believe that's that. That's what they would tell us. So that's my challenge to you, friends, is to think about every day, every day, don't get lazy in your thoughts. Your thoughts are what drive your feelings. Your feelings drive your actions and your actions focus your energy. And wherever your focus goes, your energy goes, that's where your accomplishment goes. I think that they will tell us to learn to live. So friends, 
Challenge the status quo. Take one thing in your life that you want to accomplish and write it down. What are the things that you're hearing in your minds that people say, no, you can't do it or it's impossible? Write out reasons why you can and then strike the other ones out. I believe these are true principles. I've had tremendous happiness in my life and I've accomplished many things by practicing these same principles. And I challenge you to do the same. If you'll do it, I do believe I'll see you at the top. Thank you for joining our video today regarding how to overcome limiting beliefs and honoring the life of Roger Bannister, the first man to run a sub four minute mile. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, like, comment, share. It's the lifeblood to us because it allows us to know that we're adding value to your life. Subscribe. We send our love and our appreciation to you. And as always, we invite you to follow these principles so we'll see you at the top.